A student produced this for UND's TV show, Studio One. Let's go now to Morgan Murphy for the weather news. Morgan? Thanks, Tasha. Yeah, that la this last week we were looking at drought and how we watch all year round, and we're really seeing the effects of uh, what a dry year we've had so far out on the East Coast. In North Carolina, we're seeing a lot of wildfires going through that region. In fact, over the past few days here, it's burned through 500 acres. There are about 20 municipalities in total that are trying to fight this fire, doing everything they can, but it still it just isn't enough with how dry it's been and how high the winds are just fueling that fire. But they are working towards it, and only about five homes have actually been burned so far. But moving a little bit further away from there all the way to outer space what you're looking at there is actually a storm over Africa and those are all lightning bursts there and the astronaut that filmed this actually said that when he was filming it it looked like a black hole just hovering over Africa like that but we're moving in towards summertime here which means outdoor activities and whenever I'm like running or biking or something like that I look at one map to see if it's actually feasible and that's our surface map here what we see is an average system associated with summertime and you'll see our low pressure system here with a cold front right in front of it and that cold front is going to be something you want to watch out for whenever you're looking at a map like this. So if we take a look at a location like Milwaukee, Wisconsin here, we can actually see the winds right now ahead of it are coming out of the south. It's going to bring a lot of warm air, probably clear skies going on right now, about 10 miles an hour. But as this cold front moves through there, we're going to see it just switch 180 degrees. It's going to go basically straight out of the north at about 20 to 25 miles an hour. That's going to bring in a lot of cool air from the Arctic up here. And you're actually going to see a lot of thunderstorms, a lot of rain associated with the passing of a cold front. So if you ever want to plan something outside, just keep an eye out for these couple features here. But surface maps aren't the only thing we look at on the surface to determine what the weather's going to be like for the upcoming week. Picture yourself in the middle of November. Your city receives 10 inches of snow, while a city 30 miles to the east receives none. A week later, it's a sunny day. But your city is much colder than that of the city to the east. There's a specific reason why this happens. So once we turn white, a lot of the incoming solar radiation is reflected and not utilized in heating the surface of the earth. So winter sets in after that first major snowfall in the uh, late fall or early winter. What Al is talking about is called albedo. Different objects have different albedos. On the one hand, we have objects with a high albedo, such as snow, ice, or anything else light in color. These objects will reflect more of the incoming sun's heat. On the other hand, we have surfaces with a lower albedo, like a black field, parking lot, or anything else dark in color. It is a uh, ratio between incoming solar radiation on an object, so how much does it receive, to how much of that solar radiation is reflected off of that body. So the basic answer to why one town can be much cooler than its neighbor is simply reflection. A town with no snow will absorb more of the sun's warmth than a town with snow. I'm John Bommelman, reporting for Studio One Weather. And I know a lot of people in the country saw snow this weekend, but just know that as soon as that snow is gone, all the heat from the sun is going to stay right on the surface with you. Moving into thunderstorm season, though, our well, the question of the week is what kind of clouds are associated with extremely severe thunderstorms? Is it cumulonimbus, cirrus, stratus, or cumulus? And I hear the Weather Channel throw this word around all the time, Tasha, so if you've seen one of their weather casts, you've probably heard of it. 